Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of 40 Guard Live. Today, we talk about the, one of my favorite topics, career in cyber, especially how to get into threat intelligence. And who would be a better partner than this uh, than Glenn Maiden from Australia? Hey, Glenn, how are you? I am great today, Janice. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is going to be a fascinating discussion, and it's really going to be uh, great to look at the look at look at our careers and uh, how we can sort of uh, get more people into such an exciting industry. Definitely, but but Glenn, before we start, I really want to address the elephant in the room. I, I did make my bet today just for this uh, recording, and I hope when my mom will see this, she will be uh, super proud about it. But uh, with that out of the way, let me get uh, let me get you some background from your side because. You and I, we end up in the same team. We're part of the intelligence unit at Fortinet, where we are focusing on a lot of research topics, a lot about what is actually going on in cyberspace. And I think if you compare our career paths, we went a completely different path to end up in the same team and focusing on similar topics these days. And I would like to hear a little bit from you, where you're coming from and um, how did you end up where you are right now? Yeah, thank you, Janice. So I think it's a really good, uh, I think it's a really good sort of introduction to sort of a career in cyber. Um, you know, going back sort of in the 90s, I started out as an information technology officer with our Australian Department of Defence. So I was doing a lot of sort of technical work. I was evalu evaluating a whole bunch of um, hardware and software to make sure that it was appropriate for being uh, installed onto the Army network. So uh, back then, cyber wasn't a career as it is today. So I moved to what's now known as our Australian Signals Directorate, which is basically our authority on uh, cybersecurity uh, in conjunction with our um, Australian Cybersecurity Centre. So I moved there in the sort of uh, in about 1999. And I sort of fell into cyber because, as I said, it wasn't a career. So the really interesting part for me was, um, you know, obviously I had a technical background, but um, I saw people coming into the in, into the cybersecurity world, uh, both men and women, bringing all these different sort of disciplines to cyber. So, you know, whether it was um, someone that was an ex-army tank driver in, um, in one instance to someone that was an economist to another lady that was a, a psychologist. All these different um, uh, backgrounds came in and they all had something really, really valuable to uh, to add to this sort of cyberspace. So I spent most of my career there and then um, I've been out in the private sector for the um, for the last few years and uh, got to Fortigar Yet Labs, and which is, you know, to me is one of the most sort of the threat intelligence side is one of the most exciting, innovative and I guess dynamic parts of cybersecurity. Yeah, and, and we are so glad to have you, of course. Uh, but I, I do think a lot of the time, at least from my side, when I talk with others, there's always this question, I work in tech or I, I have um, some topics around security in, in my daily life, but how do I really get into the threat intelligence part? Because as we all know, cybersecurity, it's, it's everywhere. It, it's not just this specific side of where we need to focus on cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Can, can mean so many things. It can mean something like social engineering. It can mean something like secure application developing, software engineering. It can mean you're a product manager when it comes to cyber. But where, when we talk about threat intelligence, what would you, how would you describe threat intelligence? And how do you get the information that you need for your daily life to make sure you're on top of the, the game? Oh, look, I think, um, again, that's probably a, a difficult question as well. Like threat intelligence can be um, a lot of things. I guess, you know, for us in uh, Fortigard Labs, you know, having uh, such broad reach into such a, you know, a varied level of tele telemetry, pulling that all in and normalising it and exploiting all that data, that gives us a really, really good uh, view and a really, really good feeling for that sort of macro level threat. So from a threat intelligence perspective, um, uh, I really like that we're sort of getting a, getting in front of some of the threat campaigns and potentially if there's, um, you know, a new, uh, some new sort of campaign, threat campaign coming out, you know, we can work, uh, you know, with national certs and with our customers and partners and potentially have protections in place before that threat gets, um, you know, really fulfilled. But um, I guess the other part of that too is some of the roles within, even within the threat intelligence, you know, so whether you're doing that traditional uh, investigative type of role where you're, you know, going through and um, looking up, you know, who's the, who's the threat actors, what is the infrastructure they're using, as opposed to maybe doing some data science and looking for, you know, that needle in the haystack. There's such a variation of really, really interesting jobs, which again, uh, does, I guess it sort of does tell us that there's such a broad requirement for, you know, really smart, passionate people to bring to the bear. Bring to bring to the bring to the fight. Yeah, it definitely. And you know, when I think about threat intelligence, it's really about understanding what are the threats which are out there. Because when 
we talk about attacks happening on a daily basis, a lot of them are carried out by malicious threat actors with different kind of motivations. So it's really un- important for us to understand what is their motivation, where they're coming from. And for us on the defensive side, once we have this information available, we need to feed it into security solutions to prepare against these uh, attacks. And it's, it's interesting, when, when I look a little bit back, I, I, I had the more technical round when I started, I'm like system engineering, but for me, threat intelligence was always something which was super exciting. So it was a big goal of mine to be part of a department where we can not only focus internally, like a lot of experts at 40 Guard Labs, but also other key partners from the industry, where we really collaborate together and understand what is going on out there and how do we protect against these kind of events. And looking back now, I think this was a, a very unique opportunity and I'm very grateful that I had this possibility inside the company to, to be able to join uh, such a wonderful team. And if, if you would advise anyone l- looking a little bit further back, how would you recommend if they are interested in cyber threat intelligence how could they enter this field? Yeah, it's interesting, Jonas. So, um, you know, you talk about sort of coming to this team. I think it's a real, pa- you need to have that passion of uh, thinking like a hacker. So, you know, I know yourself and, you know, some of our colleagues like Amir, so always just sort of thinking, you know, if there's a system or some process, you know, how could that process pot- potentially be um, undermined? So while, uh, you know, some people might need to have a, um, uh, you know, a computer science degree or an engineering degree or a really sort of STEM-based background, Again, there's always room for people that are uh, maybe more from a human science type perspective, you know, thinking about um, uh, potentially the motivations of a hacker or even, um, you know, how you could better uh, trick a victim who in terms of a social engineering attack, as attack, as you mentioned. So I think you can. I've, I've had it in my experience where you can actually teach someone that doesn't have a technical background. You can teach them the basics of um, uh, technology. You can teach them the OSI model. You can teach them TCPIP. You can teach them cyber basics, even with things like our NSE uh, Institute. But you do need to have that passion for you know for understanding you know how systems work and um, you know how they can potentially potentially be undermined. So for me, the biggest thing is that passion, uh, that passion and the willingness to learn. That's 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 mine. I'm not sure whether you whether you agree or disagree or whether you think that there's more. I, I definitely agree that the passion is like the key foundation which you need to have because otherwise you will probably not have fun doing it and you will be stuck um, very early on. But I do also want to highlight, I think the internet is such a wonderful place where there's so many resources available. So, for example, I remember when I applied for this position, first I was super intimidated. I was like, oh my God, this is such a a new field for me and I, I don't have a lot of experience. So how can I use the internet to my advantage and train myself to be ready for these interviews and to understand what is exactly required for um, being able to join a a team like this. And these days, the beauty about the internet is all you need is a laptop or like a device which can communicate with the internet and websites like um, social media websites, even like YouTube. I remember I spent a lot of time on YouTube following people who were doing like these uh, capture the flag contests in offensive security. So for example, there's a very popular website called Hack the Box. It's, It's free for everyone. And people are trying to hack into these private environments, which are built as a lab, so you can gather experience. And I had no idea about offensive security before that. So for me, this was all new. It was all from scratch. And seeing these people, how they use certain kind of techniques and what their thought process is, is a wonderful thing. Because I believe learning from others is a a really great opportunity, especially in times like these where people are actively going on a computer, live streaming their 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 progress, how they would approach certain problems is something um, which we definitely see different than, for example, 20 years ago, where this whole industry didn't exist in that way that you can just go online, communicate with others, going on the, going like uh, chat groups like Discord and uh, get in touch with these people and, and learn from each other. I think that's a really key part that I would recommend to everyone out there who's interested in cyber in general. This is not a battle you need to fight by yourself because it's really, really tough. And there are so many skilled people out there who are very happy to help you if they see that you are motivated. So to me, I think the the biggest advice which I can get is surround yourself with people who are better than you, who are 
happy to share information with you. And, you know, when I joined this team, there was one guy back then in our team, uh, Anthony John Domenico, who always told me, Jonas, please make sure you're the dumbest person in the room and then learn from others. Be open, be humble. And there's so many opportunities out there. So I'll definitely never forget that. Yeah, and I think um, you think of some organisations that are out there. So obviously Fortinet and Derek Menke, obviously who we work for, was uh, always uh, pushing sharing and sharing and partnering. So you know, as you as you rightly say, this is not the cyber threat is not something that anyone can do uh, alone. Whether you're a government or whether you're a um, you know the biggest cyber security company in the world like we are, um, it's not something that we can do alone. So the Cyber Threat Alliance is uh, releasing really good quality uh, intelligence reports all the time. We've got um, uh, you know, other national certs. So here in Australia, we've got our Australian Cyber Security Centre. You've got the uh, Singapore um, Cyber Security Agency. The UK has got the NCSC, obviously uh, CISA over in the US. So all these um, cyber security expert bodies are releasing quite good intelligence. And, um, you know, if you're following sort of some of the personalities in the industry on, on as you say, you mentioned uh, platforms like Discord or Twitter, you can actually get in front of it. So, you know, I know the recent Log4j example, you know, it had so much publicity. And when it first came out, it's, well, how does that work? You know, I think by just sort of, you know, going onto Twitter, looking at a few of the posts about uh, about that particular vulnerability, I had a reasonably confident understanding of that vulnerability within sort of, you know, probably an hour, I think. So the information's out there if you're, if you're willing to sort of, you know, find the right people and uh, take the time to sort of take, take the time to sift through the sift through the information and understand how some of these things are working. Yeah, I definitely couldn't have said it better. Um... That's, uh, that's pretty much all from my side. Do you have anything to add from your side? No, I guess one final, I guess one really, really positive way to sort of end this off is I think uh, one good thing about uh, the cybersecurity industry is there's not really some hard barriers to entry. It, it is sometimes a little bit difficult to break into if you're um, new to the industry, but, uh, you know, it doesn't matter sort of, you know, what your background or, um, you know, your expertise. This is an industry that, that uh, where you can really have a great career and, um, and you can add some value to that industry. So, you know, as we mentioned before, as long as you've got that passion and you're willing to sort of learn the sort of some of the, some of the basics from a technical perspective. You know, this is probably going to be one of the most exciting uh, and innovative industries uh, worldwide for probably the next sort of ten or twenty years. So I think, um, yeah, this is a good place to be. Yeah, and it's definitely not going away. Everything is moving towards software, and whatever is software can be attacked and will be hacked if not properly secured. So we need everyone out there who's interested and has a passion for cyber. And uh, hopefully, we will um, meet some of you soon in the future. With, with that being said, Glenn, it was such a pleasure to talk to you again. And uh, I hope I see you next time soon on the, on the 40 Guard Live. You too, Janice. Thank you all. Thank you all. We are out. <laughs>